I have the valves out of one head um, using this pretty budget valve spring compressing tool. I think it was about 50 bucks. Um, definitely not the best thing you can buy, but I really didn't want to spend like $400 on a workshop quality one. So this is doing the job. And having taken them out of one head, I've kind of figured out the best way for, for me to do it so that I feel like it's relatively safe and so I can kind of preserve the, the uh, muscle endurance in my little hands. So I'm going to take the valves out of this head now and just walk you through uh, the process of what I've learned in doing this. It's not a bad background noise, is it? I doubt you can hear me over that. No. So the first thing I've learned is these caps get stuck. Um, maybe on the collets, I'm not really sure how it's getting stuck, but when I grab this tool to start compressing the spring, um, the cap won't come down and therefore the, the collets can't kind of come up and, and get pulled out. Now, I did try the rubber mallet to kind of bash on the caps to try and free them up, but it just didn't seem to be enough, so it seems like this little steel hammer is the way to go. I'm not reusing the collets or the caps or the springs, so I'm not too worried about damaging that. Hopefully that's enough. Next thing is to support the valve underneath. And that's just a little block of plastic. It's just sitting under there. Also, because I don't have strong hands, um, I found that when I was doing these on the first head, uh, my hands were getting really sore and worn out, but these thick gloves just somehow make it better. Next is getting the little feet of this tool in a really good position on the springs. So I want the feet really tucked in well and grabbing the spring. Um, and that just takes a little bit of fiddling because there's an inner spring that kind of gets in the way of those feet pushing all the way in. So this is just a question of fussing around until it lands on a nice position. That looks good. Just taking up the slack now. And making sure I've got it straight and lined up so it doesn't want to pop free. Then down it goes. So this is working, the cap's not stuck. I can spin that around. And just down far enough to fish those collets out with a magnet, not with my fingers. And because my hands are weak and I'm trying to make them last for 16 valves, I'm using my left hand to release it. 
just saving my right hand for tightening it down. I know, it's just a silly little thing, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. I probably don't need to leave this on here to, to release it, but it just is in a good position. There we go. exhaust valve. And then the process starts for the next one. But that's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and it feels pretty safe too. This is the very last valve. And my wrist is really glad it's the very last valve. But hey, this is how we learn. And we don't have the budget for a, a full on workshop. It's fun anyway and satisfying because these heads are just about ready to go to the machine shop. I don't know if I need to put new valve seats in for unleaded fuel or not. I don't know how to tell if it's already happened but I'll definitely get that checked out. Yeah. And why do I get them back? We're in business. New springs, new valve guides, new valve seals. And I will keep using the, uh, the Yellow Terra roller rockers that came with it too because I think replacing them is going to be something stupid like $1,200. Anyway, all the valves are out. There's that beast again. 1500 horsepower blown VL Calais. So this is a super scraper, as is this, different sizes, which I got from Mortsky Repair, and he happily shipped them to Australia, which is great. Excellent for cleaning up any surface. They're really precise, really sharp. And because I have them, why not use them? And I'll try to get as much of this chunky stuff off the heads before I take them to the machine shop. Oh, there we go. Maybe I was just being too gentle. So that's the heads ready to go to the machine shop and I think it's going to take a little while. They're usually quite busy uh, and I've sent them um, a message to let them know I'm ready for them but I haven't heard back yet so we'll see what happens. I have given them the basics of what I've done and, and what I want to have done uh, but they are experts in building performance engines so they will no doubt have some advice for me. 
and that will mean a follow-up video um, about the heads. Uh, likely when I get them back, I'll tell you what's happened to them and what the next steps is to um, what the next step is to to rebuild them. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you know that this um, these heads are going on that 308 red motor, and it's for my uh, 1979 Holden One Tonner, also known as Trixie. So while uh, we wait for these heads to get um, machined, rebuilt, whatever, I'll turn my attention back to Trixie because we've got the cab off and it's now time to, to do an assessment of any um, repairs that might be needed. Like there is minimal rust in that body but uh, there is a little bit that, that needs kind of fixing up. So I'll, I'll do an assessment and try and figure out what I think I should do. Maybe I'll share that as a video and get, get your advice on that too. Anyway, that was a lot of fun learning how to get uh, valves out of cylinder heads. Pretty happy with how the process went. It's very satisfying, like I said. Um, so I will uh, bask in the glow of that satisfaction until I see you in the next video.